tagging buildings throughout the city with graffiti. Some of the graffiti was spray the downtown area as well as the fans say it's problems like this they're seeing all over the it place. It is what it is. It's garbage. It's garbage on the sides of buildings. When I was doing graffiti, I was pretty habitually breaking the law like many times every single day. A serial graffiti vandal is facing a felony charge. A lot of positive things came out of me being in jail, actually. It totally changed the way I was making art. When I was in high school in Northern Virginia, I was on a bus trip with a friend, and he was looking at a graffiti magazine. He showed it to me, and I was like, this looks interesting. Hey, one of the things that really jumped out to me early on about graffiti was anybody can do this if they want to. Came up with this funny idea. We thought of making stickers and posters that said refuse to be smart. Basically, you know, telling people to be stupid. A few years into living in Richmond, I was being as prolific as possible within the realm of vandalism. I had gotten on the radar of the police. Really the main thing that got me in trouble was this bridge spot. I drove under this bridge and just remember the first time I saw it and was like, coming back and painting this, like that's, that's definitely happening. A couple days later, me and Seek came back, got away with it perfectly that night, painted a couple other spots over the next month and it's like seven in the morning, woke up to this, bang, 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 Richmond police open up. At the bridge, they had found one paint can lid that had a barcode to the store because it was a mistint. Traced it to that store, went through debit card transactions from right around that time and found transaction for me, which was enough to get the search warrant. When I went to court in July, pled guilty to misdemeanors and I'm like, cool, follow the bailiff that way. <laughs> I was like, oh, this, this, this is real now. Um, I didn't know what to expect other than oh, I was going to have a bunch of time. Started making a bunch of drawings that were everything that was going on in my brain of how'd I wind up here, uh, stream of conscious type drawings, which is funny because it, it, it totally changed the way I was making art. I ended up spending 10 months in jail total. All the things that I saw while I was in jail, all the other people's situations and, and realizing how fortunate I was in so many ways. I have a really good life and a really good family. That's enough to be like, okay, like, don't, don't do this. Getting out and trying to readjust to not seeing the world the same way uh, was and is very difficult. Made art when I got home. Taking the style of drawing I developed in jail and pushing that into something that was totally different. I started assisting Ed Trask, who's a mural painter here in Richmond. He was helping to coordinate the first street art festival in 2012. I was like, yo, do you want to paint? It was the first time somebody was really like, here's a big space, do whatever you want. That was really the time period when I started being able to make a living doing this. Every job or every situation is different. That's one of the things I enjoy most, is taking on every surface as something that should feed into what you're doing. Hopefully people respond to is like seeing things in a different way, not seeing art as something that you're expected to like it because it's in a museum or a gallery. It's out in public view and therefore is subject to public scrutiny. Everyone's entitled to an opinion about it. That's good for people to think about the creative process in that way. Public art in Richmond is really important in setting the tone for how the city looks and how people perceive the city going forward. It was late 2016 when I was asked to join the Street Art Festival board. The mission for the Street Art Festival is to raise funds for arts-based organizations around the city. Getting to be part of this creative community and really sharing that to me is super exciting. There's lots of history here and it's complicated in lots of ways. We are building something totally new. Our ability to have a really strong public art culture here and have people find interest in that, that's something that I really think is important. 
It's color and thought and creativity injected into daily life. 